Joining us Give now no is our dual threat analyst. He is an excellent insider of BYU football information. Blaine Fowler is with us once again. Uncle B, welcome back to the show. What's up, guys? Hey, hey I, I, agree with, I agree with that whole with what you just said, Spencer. And I don't think, I think we root for Notre Dame, but we, we root from the trip up like twice. And one of those is when they play BYU. We want them. Yeah. We want them like just outside um, of consideration. So we want them like nine and three. Um, and we want one of those three losses to, to beat to BYU. And then BYU goes 10 plus. And then all of a sudden that Notre Dame win does a couple of things. It, it, and as essence knocks them out and puts BYU in, but we need them to be good so that that win looks good for BYU. So I, I get I get your logic, but we can't root against them. We just need to root against them just a couple more times other than the BYU. Game. Fair enough. Yeah, and if Notre Dame goes 10 plus wins, they're a really good team. That's gonna that'd be an amazing win. There's not a ton of those type of yeah. wins where you go power five, that team won 10 plus. Like it's Miami and it's Utah uh, from what I looked at um, all time in BYU history. It's hard right. to get those wins. Um, coaches poll, no BYU in it. Um, we like to make fun of that poll because the sports information directors poll. Uh, but were you surprised BYU wasn't in it? <laughs> that's a true. That's a true statement. And yes, I was surprised they were in it. Um, the, the, with what BYU has coming back, folks that actually look at it um, would just go. At, they're at least a top twenty-five team to start the season. Um, so I, I'm a little bit surprised. But as you guys have mentioned, that that poll is not one that a lot of research is done. I feel like the AP poll does more. Re like the AP <laughs> voters actually go look up the teams and read a little bit about it and they go, oh, man, they've got a potential draft pick quarterback coming back that was really good this last year. they got all these linemen coming back. Puka Nakua's back. Um, most of their defense is back. Yeah, this was a this was a, rate, a ranked team last year. Yeah, they're, they're somewhere in there. Maybe I, I put them at 23. So any reasonable human that studied a, a shred would have them in their top 25. Blaine Fowler is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, the Cougars, we think, need to win at least 10 games, Blaine. So let's stay on that line of conversation and the New Year's six chances for BYU. Where do you think BYU's shot legitimately falls in terms of comparing it to last year? Do you feel like because BYU is a perceived better team, even though there are fewer spots available, the BYU has a better shot to crack into the New Year's six? Or is it just logistically too tough? I, I do think it's logistically tough, but I think this schedule sets up fine. I actually think the P5s that BYU plays this year have a chance to be overall better than the P5. Even though they played one more last year, I feel like based on who's coming back on all these, and remember, this is this is based on actually some research, right, unlike the coaches <laughs> poll, that that the schools that, that BYU has on this schedule, by and large, they all have a chance to be good. So I don't I don't see any um, where these teams go and just fall on their faces. I'll, uh, I, I hate to downgrade the team that I played on in '84, but Pittsburgh fell on their face after we played them. Yeah. Right? They didn't. They weren't who they were supposed to be. I don't see these teams falling on their face. While well, Stanford is going to be who who they are, I actually think they may be better than people are giving them credit for. The rest of that schedule, I feel like, are going to be teams that are you know are good and have eight, nine wins, and so I think BYU has a chance to have a much stronger at the end of year strength of schedule and some wins against some quality opponents. You already talked about Notre Dame, who may be the best of all of those. Uh, I think Oregon's a big opportunity. I think they match up fine with Oregon, and Oregon in a really weak North Pac-12 this year has a chance to, to look really, really good. So um, if they get to 10 wins based on this year's, the teams that they're playing that are P5s, I think they'll be ranked higher than they were last year at that same, you know, when BYU was knocking on the door. Um, so, and I always feel like if you go back and look historically, when is BYU special? When do they get 10 or 11 wins? It's typically when they have a returning starting quarterback that's experienced, that everybody's considered a high level NFL type talent. Um, and when they have a bunch of linemen coming back, when that combination happens at the same time, they're, they're usually good. Those are the seasons that produce 10 plus wins. And I look at this offensive line, it's as deep and as big and as nasty and as talented as maybe they've ever had. 
We have some phenomenal offensive linemen, but as a group, I'm talking 10 deep. It's a big wow when you go out there and watch them. And, and then you have a quarterback in Jaron that I feel like already in fall ball just looks better than he's ever looked, and he's healthy, and that's a key keep him healthy. You throw Puka Nakua out there, who's an NFL talent at wide receiver. Gunnar Romney, who's an NFL talent. A big group of tight ends that can all play. Chris Brooks, I think, is the real deal, but they're deeper than than just Chris Brooks at running back. And all of a sudden, you start to go, wait a minute. These, that's the formula, typically, for BYU to win 10. And so I think if they're 10-plus with this schedule and those teams do what they're supposed to do, BYU's going to have a stronger case this year than they had last year. 100%. And uh, it'll be interesting because there's the give and the take of, well, if you beat these teams, typically they weren't as good as we thought. So BYU needs a couple of these teams to – to win 10 plus and BYU wins. Um, and this is a team that's ready for it, Blaine. This is a team that in 2018 and 19 go seven and six and go through their druthers so that in 2020, 21, and now 22, they can have a great year. You mentioned Jaron Hall. Obviously, having a great quarterback going into the year gives us a ton of confidence sitting here going, BYU's going to be good. It's just how good. What have you noticed from him in fall camp so far that makes you think he's taken a step up even from last year? I just look at the decision-making. Like, he's always seemed really poised from, from day one, but sometimes early in his career, he looked poised, and I was just going, get it out, get the ball out, come on, now, he's there, on the break, go, go, go. Um, and the ball would come out a little late. He was way better last year, but mm. there were times I was like, oh, he's just a little too cautious. Get the ball into the middle of the field. That inside breaking route, it's there, throw it. I felt like at the end of the year, he got even better at that. And I'm nitpicking here. Like, I'm... But remember who I'm comparing him to, right? I'm I'm comparing him to to some of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game in college that played at BOE, Steve Young's and the Jim McMahon's. But now this fall, all of a sudden, he has such a command of the offense, and he's so confident and on the same page with his guys that all of the throws were a year and a half ago. I was going, why doesn't he just get the ball out? The ball's coming out. It's on time. It's in a good spot. It's got tons of velocity on it. And I'm just thinking, man, he's... He's to the point where I'm thinking, yep, yeah, this is an elite, elite level player because elite level players just don't have all the physical skills. He's always had that. Zach Wilson had that as a sophomore. Elite level players, then all of a sudden the decision making process becomes so quick that they're way ahead of the defense and the ball's coming out before the defense can react. That's where I feel Jaron Hall is right now. That's the difference between great and really good. Blaine Fowler is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Blaine, do you feel like at this point, BYU overall as a team, not just Jaron Hall, is ahead of schedule in training camp? Yeah, I, I feel like they're. I feel like because defensively, there's some guys that are stepping up that we weren't really talking about much going in. You know, coming out of spring, there's a little bit of buzz, uh, but there's some guys that where I had questions, like at linebacker, I had questions and. Kavika Gagne is one example or where you're just going, whoa, this this dude has given him some depth. I wasn't even – I didn't even mention his name last year coming off of an injury. And and all of a sudden I'm going, this guy can rotate in and play. Like he's going to be really, really good. Um, and, and then and then um, Peely was a guy that I was like, is his mind going to turn on? Is he going to be able to play full speed? And um, as of three practices in, it's like, oh, baby – I, I watched him uh, in a drill, uh, which was a welcome to college football to the freshman he was going against drill, come up, two-hand arm shiver where the freshman tight end's head snapped back, um, and he just dropped him to his knees and defended the run. And I thought, oh, baby, that's what BYU missed last season against the run when he got hurt and wasn't in there. Just a tough-as-nails inside run defender that people aren't going to knock off the ball, that's going to step up in the line of scrimmage and make it tough to run. Um, so he's a pleasant surprise at where he is coming back from that knee. Um, uh, it, I we keep Nobody ever talks about Ammon Hanneman. And, and everybody's like, well, the safeties, and I'm watching him at strong safety going, this dude can flat out play. Have you ever met a Hanneman that's not a crazy athlete? <laughs> they just don't. It's fair. They don't have them. Like, do, do they, they don't raise kids that aren't not so crazy athletes and and Ammon is right in that mold and I feel like the light bulb's coming on for him where he's really understanding where he's supposed to be and I think he's going to have a breakout where he's going to be really good and could man that strong safety spot and have we even been talking about Ammon Hanneman I know I haven't 
But I feel no. like we should be ta- we should be talking about him now because I think he's going to have a, a big impact. And and John Nelson, I think, is playing phenomenal. At, 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 and he can play inside or outside in that D line. The D line's way deeper than I thought they were. And then and then the one that that's really standing out is Gabe Judy, the transfer yeah. at yeah. corner. And I'm just looking, going, just go watch one on ones and see who can cover. And all of a sudden, you go, whoa, you, you've got D'Angelo Mandel, you've got Caleb Hayes, you got Jacob Robinson who's playing corner now, you got you've got Gabe Judy. You like you're going, that's four really good face press man cover guys that can cover people all over the field. And I love their mentality. I, in spring ball, I watched this and I see it carried to the fall. D'Angelo Mandel. Like, he just takes a rep, and he's going back to get on his knee and have a rest or to walk over and rest. It's not – he'll be back in, like, three or four rotations. And then Puka Nukua comes up to the front of the line, and, and D'Lo goes, oh, no, hey, I got, I got him. Like, he wants to go against the best on the offense that there is, and and Puka wants to go against him. So I see these elite players, and that's – and I feel like that attitude carries over, and D'Lo's examples carried over. That's what Gabe wants to do, and that's what uh, – that's what – Robinson wants to do, and that's what Hayes wants to do, who's a really, really good lockdown cover guy. And and so all of a sudden, there's this mentality of confidence at that corner position. And when you have four guys like that, and it's, and they have more than just those four, but they're four really good cover guys, man, you can do a lot of things defensively that you maybe haven't done in the last couple of years when you have that kind of confidence. So I think the defense is way better than I thought they were going into camp. Now that I look at it in a, as a whole, we knew the offense was going to be good, and they're going to be good. If they're not a top ten offense, then I'm going to be—I'll be very disappointed if they're not a top ten offense. Defense, there were some questions, and I'm getting some answers early that make me feel really good that this team can be a special kind of a team. He is our dual threat analyst, Blaine. For the record, you are way ahead of schedule in fall camp, my friend. But that's not a surprise. <laughs> no, did, don't you remember Spencer? What I said I was going to lose ten pounds by fall camp. I remember that. I, well, I've been in the gym like crazy. I've been doing all kinds of exercises, and the one exercise I have been neglecting terribly is pushaways. Um, <laughs> meaning, push away from the table, push away from the refrigerator, <laughs> push away from the cabinet at 9:30 at night. It's the one exercise that the I have neglected away. in my off-season work, and I don't care how many bench presses I do yeah. or how many squats until I get pushaways into my regular routine. I'm just going to stay the fat guy that I am. That's all there is to it. Here's the strength for pushing away, Blaine. Thanks for the time, my friend. All right, guys. I appreciate it. Blaine.